Okay, let's keep going and let's look at another phoneme isolation question. And this is a, this is a fun one. I'm trying to give you lots of different questions so you can see how they can test this idea. Okay, but that whenever you think of it, whenever you see a phoneme isolation question, remember it's part of phonemic awareness, right? We think of those levels. I always go back to the levels: word level, syllable level, onset and rhyme level, and the phoneme level. Um, is the most advanced, and that's called the phonemic awareness level, okay, where we're dealing with hearing, identifying, manipulating individual sounds and words. And in that advanced level, working with phonemes, phoneme isolation is one of those initial skills. Okay, with that set up, I want you to take one minute. I want you to read the question, okay? Pause me now. Pause. I'll see you soon. Unpause. I'm back. Now you may need time to read it to yourself. You might need more time. You may need less time. Take the time you need. Make sure you read it. I'm going to talk about it. The first thing I see is the, the grade, kindergarten. And the there's a teacher, kindergarten teacher. They're going to, they're going to play a game with the students. Sometimes in games, that could be like an activity. It could be thought of as a learning experience. Now, kindergarten, what could kindergarten be? Well, it could be a lot of things, but I'm, it's going to go with either a, a sound game or a, uh, a print, some type of print thing. Now, it could go either way, but let's find out what type of game, game it is, a sound or a print. Okay, so the teacher does this game. The teacher says, guess whose name I'm going to say? Oh, say. Say is a sound thing. The teacher then says another sound thing, the initial sound of that student's name. Um, oh, they, then the teacher says the initial sound of the student's name, for example, M uh, for this uh, student's name. Uh, now, uh, Makaro. And then the children try and guess the name. This activity likely promotes the reading development of the student, reading development of the students primarily by helping them. Now, now I'm going to go back to this activity. This activity, what is it? A sound thing or a print thing? Well, it's a it's it's an activity that involves oral language because the teacher is saying they're saying things, so it's talking, it's using oral language, um, and they're and they're and they're having the student identify a sound. So it's definitely a sound activity. Now, what type of sound activity is it? Is it like a rhyme and alliteration? Is it a syllable activity? Is it an onset rhyme activity? Oh, no, no, Chris. It's an activity where we're, that they're giving the initial sound. That's a phoneme activity. So we should be thinking about an answer that falls under uh, the phoneme level, right? Or phonemic awareness. So let's see. Um, it's not a spelling activity, okay? Um, it is, uh, it's not a phonics activity where we're doing letter sound correspondence, right? It is, uh, it is not blending. It's not a blending activity. We're not, blend, we, we're not uh, blend separate sounds and words. We're not doing that type of activity, but we will see those in a little bit. Now we're doing a sound activity. What, what could it be? So I guess the answer is B here. Recognize that spoken word is made up of sounds. So when we do phoneme isolation, that is a test to see if we can hear that a word like Makaro, uh, is, can be broken into individual sounds, or at least the initial part of that word can be broken into a, an individual sound. The, the M in Makaro matches up with the M sound, right? Okay. Team, these are great practice questions. This is a great test to take a look at, okay? If you, if you haven't taken a look at that test, you should. It's right here. Um, it's from that California exam. A uh, really great one to take a look at, the Rika one. Take a great look at it. It's, it's fun. The answer here is B. Look at some of the vocab that we, we came across. Phonemic awareness, phoneme isolation, segmenting and blending phonemes, which we, we're going to do in a little bit because that's the next level of phonemic awareness. Phonics. We didn't say encoding, but uh, let's go back to this one here. Any Anything involving spelling learn how to spell their own name. That is a spelling is an encoding. And what is encoding? Encoding is when we take sounds and match them up with their spelling patterns. So whenever a child's asked to take sounds in oral language, 
in spoken words, in spoken language, and match them up with uh, the correct spelling patterns. Let's just say they were trying to spell the word cat, right? They're taking the sounds, um, k, a, t. And whenever they match up sounds with their corresponding correct spelling patterns, that is called encoding or spelling. Okay, just had to throw that in there. I want to try in this class team, I really want to help you work your vocab. If I can help you with that, you're going to understand more questions. So when I can, even though the question is not about encoding, if I can throw it out there and then we're going to do a problems later on, it's my doing it now. And then when you do it later on, it will really help you know it a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? Okay, team, the answer here is B. It's a great problem. All right, let's go to the next one.